My name's Rizwana Bashir. I'm the founder and CEO of Peak.com. Rizwana, it's lovely being here and lovely being in the offices of Peak. And I'm just so excited to talk to you about books and more. The first book you chose was T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets. So I think first, um, for a long time, I didn't really read a ton of poetry. Um, and that's because I think it is harder to get into. Um, you know, you find yourself thinking about every paragraph and um, having to take much more from those few words um, than, than the literal meaning. And so I think it's intimidating as a result. But I found myself last year saying, OK, well, I'd like to read a little bit more poetry. Um, and so I went to a friend and kind of said, give me your top you know, poems and, and poetry to read. This was one of them, and I totally fell in love with it. It's unusual because it's quite a long poem there. It's, uh, it's a set into four parts. Um, but what I love about it is um, this tremendous wisdom in, in especially some of the paragraphs, some of the lines. So time present and time future, what's the link with peak and travel? Because I'm sure there must be a link. Yeah, actually, there's a, there's a lot of stuff around specific moments and memories. Uh, there's, a, there's a section where he uh, describes um, kind of really powerful moments uh, that become memories. And so with that, um, and overcome time. Um, and so for me, experiences and the whole nature of what we do at Peak is all about people going out and having these magical moments. So I'm going to jump now from time present to time past <laughs> okay, and great. to go back to, to your second book that you highlighted, which is a biography of an empress, a Chinese empress. I am a total fangirl for Yang Chang. And so she's done an incredible job of writing these um, historical novels or, or biographies uh, about really important figures in China. The story with Empress Daoja Shiqi um, is about a, a, a woman who um, you know, is a concubine, ends up marrying the emperor and having a child with him. Uh, he dies. It's just an incredible story. It's fascinating because there's so many twists and turns. It feels like a thriller. I'd like to hear more about women, other women who have inspired you. One thing that I'm really excited about is that there is a group and generation, I think, of, of, of young women today who are forging paths as entrepreneurs. Katrina Lake, um, who's the CEO of Stitch Fix. Caroline Gone, who has a company called Levo. I think Oprah Winfrey has been um, phenomenally powerful for people around how we perceive um, being able to be authentic and be ourselves. Do you feel that women in tech get enough attention, as much attention as the men? Because you mentioned two names that I hadn't heard of. I think there are some really great female um, leaders and CEOs. I think sometimes they're not getting as much representation as they could. Remember that at about, only about 2% of, of venture capital goes towards female uh, founders. Um, so there is definitely a delta between um, you know, women and men when it comes to their ability to be able to shape and build companies. And yet when we think about the tremendous wealth creation and impact that startups are having today, um, that's something we have to change. What would you be celebrating, commemorating in this year for International Women's Day? Well, I think, um, I think in the last year, um, Me Too and Time's Up um, have been really impactful um, in how much we've been able to have a conversation about issues that have frankly been quite taboo um, and you know, whether it's harassment or abuse that, is, that has been able to continue for, for decades, centuries probably. Um, and I think that, that it does feel as though we have a turning point to start a really important conversation. I think I got my personal precursor to Me Too. I wrote about abuse a few years ago and, and I remember at the time um, feeling tremendously um, conscious and self-conscious around being able to bring up an issue which um, felt both deeply personal but also something that I didn't want to be labelled as, you know. When it comes to abuse and harassment, the basic fact is that the vast majority of, of women have, have faced it. And so I think that there are things that we've become almost used to um, and having to deal with. And I think that um, we're in the majority and now we realize we are. Whereas before it was, am I the only one? Is this, only, is this happening to me? Should I really talk about this thing? Is it gonna impact my career? Um, is it gonna be, impact the way that people perceive me? And I think when you have the most famous and powerful actresses in the world through to, um, you know, really successful business leaders all kind of sharing, hey look, this has happened to me. I think we've changed the perspective around 
the victim shaming and the victim blaming around it. And so I do think it's, it's, it's a, a point where we can change things. Yeah.